Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how you can set up a reverse proxy on your Synology NAS. So I recently created a tutorial that shows you how to set up Nginx Proxy Manager on a Synology NAS. And a lot of the questions I received were asking why you would use Nginx Proxy Manager or why you would set it up when Synology has Nginx built into the Synology NAS operating system by default. So the truthful answer is if you're strictly looking to set up a reverse proxy, you probably don't even have to set up Nginx Proxy Manager. And that's why I'm creating this tutorial to show you how you can set up uh, a reverse proxy on a Synology NAS using Nginx built into DSM. So before we even get into setting up a reverse proxy, let's look at what a reverse proxy is. So I've used this slide a lot, but I think it illustrates pretty well what a reverse proxy is and how it functions. So without a reverse proxy, what you're generally doing is on your router, Whenever you want to expose a different service, you have to open up a different port. So what ends up happening is if you go into your router's configuration, you have a bunch of different ports open to a bunch of different services. Pretty much every service that you want to expose has a different port. And you also have to use different ports for that. So you only have 80 and 443 that can be uh, port forwarded to one specific device. So that means if you are using that for a website or something else, you have to now use a different port. Now what you're doing with a reverse proxy server is you're opening those 80 and 443 ports to your reverse proxy server. And at that time, your reverse proxy server is using a different domain name to access all of those web servers. So if you were to purchase a domain, like for me, I own wondertech.net. If I wanted to expose different services to the outside internet, with this reverse proxy, I could use different subdomains to access all of my services. So I could use plex.wondertech.net to get to say plex, and I can use bitwarden.wondertech.net to get to my Bitwarden instance. But the overall theme here is that I could expose as many services as I want, and I've only opened ports 80 and 443. Now that does require you to own your own domain. So if you don't own your own domain and you wanna use something like DDNS, you can use that as well. So if you're using something like DuckDNS or Synology's uh, DDNS host name that you get for free when you uh, set up your NAS, you can do that. The important part is that you have to ensure that you're using a unique domain name. So I'm hopeful that that made sense, but we're gonna run through Synology's reverse proxy setup and I'm gonna talk through every setting in hopes of explaining to you what we're doing and why we're doing it. So to get to the reverse proxy setup section, you can open up the control panel, you can select application portal, and then go to reverse proxy. At this point, you have to select create, and then you're gonna be brought to the reverse proxy setup. So in the description field, you're just gonna give it a name. This isn't used for anything, this is just used for you so that you know what reverse proxy this relates to. So the source section here is very important. So if you think about this, the source is what you're gonna be typing into your web browser to access your service. So for example, if I wanted to expose Plex and I want to access Plex using plex.wondertech.net, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna change the protocol to HTTPS, I'm gonna put the host name as plex.wondertech.net, and I'm gonna use port 443. So keep in mind that you're exposing these services outside of your network. So for me, I don't see many situations where I would be using an HTTP protocol because I wanna ensure that everything is encrypted and we're gonna to get to the certificate in a little bit. Um, but I'm sure that there are situations that you know people are exposing a non-secured portal, I'm assuming at least. Um, if you have to do that, what you would do is you'd put HTTP as the protocol, you can give it the host name that you uh, set up and then use port 80. Now, like I said, not recommended, but I'm assuming that if you're doing that, you have a reason for why you're doing it. So that's the source section. Now for uh, some of these settings, HSTS, what does that do? What that does is there are situations where you're going to be connecting to say google.com and you're connecting to it via http colon slash slash www.google.com. Now that's an HTTP request and Google on their servers is converting your HTTP request into HTTPS so that it's using SSL. Now, HSTS, what it does is it enables a header so that the, uh, the server, meaning Google in this instance, would inform your web browser that it should never be accessing this web server using HTTP. So it's pretty much just for security purposes so that you know, there can be nothing, you know, no trickery in between. 
Now, HSTS is a little finicky with subdomains. So if you're using subdomains in your content structure, generally you need to use a wildcard certificate. And that's where it gets a little tricky because Synology does not support wildcard certificates. So there are some fancy ways of getting around it, which is um, you know, pretty much using a Docker container or various other ways. We're not gonna go over that. Um, just know that if you can enable it, generally you should enable it. So the next thing we're gonna look at is HTTP slash two. Uh, what this is used for is almost exclusively performance. So certain browsers support HTTP2, uh, and if they do and you enable this, you're going to get slightly better performance. That's pretty much all it does. So we're going to skip over access control, and we're going to go over it in a little bit. I just want to finish setting this up, and then we can save it, and then we can look at access controls. Uh, so the last thing that we're going to look at is destination. Now the destination, this is the web server on your local network. So if you are accessing Plex, for example, you're probably gonna be accessing it using HTTP. So it's very important to note that if you set this as HTTP, this does not mean that you will be accessing it via HTTP from outside of your network. That's the setup that we just did in the source. The destination, this is all local traffic. So this is connecting from your NAS, from that reverse proxy server, to the server, the local server. So if you think of DSM, for example, by default, when you first set up your NAS, DSM is accessible via port 5000 for HTTP and 5001 for HTTPS. So if you want to connect to DSM via HTTPS, you'd have to set up HTTPS as the protocol. You'd give the host name, which would be the IP address of that NAS, and then you use port 5001 because that's the HTTPS port. Now I'm trying to not use DSM as an example because we're using DSM to set up this reverse proxy and I truthfully think it just confuses everything. The reason I'm bringing that up is because you have to ensure that you're connecting to a local server that has HTTPS enabled. So certain servers don't. Um, Jellyfin, I believe, I have a few tutorials up on how you could use Jellyfin. You access that via HTTP. So if you were to come in here and put HTTPS with the, uh, the IP address of that Jellyfin server and the port, you wouldn't be able to connect to it because it, it doesn't exist. That port doesn't exist. It doesn't allow HTTPS traffic. So make sure you pick right. You should be able to take exactly what you're putting in here, meaning if you're using Plex, for example, HTTP colon slash slash your Plex server's IP address and port 32400 put that into a web browser, and if you can connect to it, then you know it works. If you try something and it doesn't work, your reverse proxy will not be able to find that server. So the last thing in this setup that we're gonna look at is custom headers. So custom headers are used for various different things. So if you have to use a custom header, this is generally something that you know you have to use. Meaning that if you're trying to just expose Plex, you probably don't have to use a custom header. But if you're using a CDN like Cloudflare, for example, and you're trying to restrict access so that you know there's only traffic between Cloudflare and your local server, you would probably be using a custom header to do that. So if you need to add a custom header, this is where you would do it. And you'd come in here, enter the header name, and then enter the value, and then you can click OK and your reverse proxy at this point is fully set up. So the final thing that we're gonna look at is the access control profile. So an access control profile is used strictly to limit access to specific IP addresses. So for example, if you are exposing this service and you know that only specific IP addresses should be able to access this, you can do so here. Now, a lot of people might be thinking that a firewall would do the same. So Synology's firewall would do the same and you are right that it would do the same. But keep in mind, this whole reverse proxy is designed so that you only have to open ports 443 and 80 to be able to access these services outside of your network. So if you create a firewall rule on port 443, for example, and limit it so that only certain IP addresses can access it, it will apply to all of port 443. So all traffic on that, every single reverse proxy you set up. In this, the way it's set up, is that you can have port 443 open, but you can specify different IP addresses that can access different web services. Now, I'm not gonna act like this is something that everybody uses uh, because it's probably not, but if you need to or you want to, this is where you would do it. 
So you'd go in, you'd create a new access control profile, and then you'd have to go back to that reverse proxy that we set up, and you would have to enable the uh, access control there and pick the profile that you created. So our reverse proxy is now set up, but we still haven't opened ports 80 and 443 to our reverse proxy server, and we haven't set up the SSL certificates. So ensure, number one, that ports 80 and 443 are open to your Synology NAS. So once that's done, you can go over to the security section and then certificates, and you can request a new Let's Encrypt certificate for every service that you just exposed. Keep in mind that ports 80 and 443 have to be open in order for Let's Encrypt to validate the certificate. But since you're using the reverse proxy, you know, that's something that wouldn't work without those ports open anyway. So as soon as you've received that certificate, the last thing that you have to do is you have to click configure, and then you're gonna see your reverse proxy. It's gonna be listed here. Basically every single one that you create will be listed in this list. And what you need to do is you need to change the certificate to be that Let's Encrypt certificate that you requested. As soon as you do that, this will be pretty much the last step that you have to do. So just to recap, we created our reverse proxy, we created any access controls that we wanted, if you will be using any of those. We went in, we created our certificate, we assigned that certificate, and now if you try and access that service, you'll be connecting to it via HTTPS and an SSL certificate. So you can be confident that your traffic is encrypted. Now you can do this for various different services. That's the benefit uh, behind using a reverse proxy server. You are only exposing ports 80 and 443 to the internet, but you can expose as many different services as you'd like using different domain names. So this was a pretty long tutorial, but I'm hoping that it made sense. So obviously any questions that you have, please leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.